All right, hey guys, welcome back to The Shaving Tolson. This is your host, Timmy Two Shaves. This weekend, for me, it's a Saturday today, but for this weekend, I'm actually house-sitting at my parents' place to help them out with their animals while they're celebrating my mother's birthday, actually. So, different space, and I've also got this nifty little lavalier mic. So we're gonna see how this is gonna do with today's video, so just bear with me if I do bump it or anything like that, just I apologize. Still getting used to it, but it does seem to help out with the audio. The only tricky thing is that the room that I'm in, there's a lot of echo in here, like a lot of echo. It's a really big bathroom, and usually where I film, it's a really small bathroom, or I film in the shaved den, and there's a lot of cloth, there's things that are up that kind of dampen the sound. Don't really have that in this space, so I apologize ahead of time. But for today, this is just a normal shave of the day, but I also wanted to talk about a product that I'm testing out for the first time, and that is Long Rifle. Now, I've been wanting to test out Long Rifle soaps for a while. They're based out of, I believe, Wisconsin, and they've got a really good reputation. So it's been on my radar for a while, and this soap was only 10 bucks. Now, that's 10 bucks for three ounces, so that's about on par with what you would see with a lot of other artisans for you know four or five ounce pucks of soap. I don't think I'm gonna be running out of this anytime soon, but the best part about this soap is that I picked this up locally. So I went to Claremore to a place called the Haberdashery. Really cool place, great men's grooming place. Um, they've got a little bit of everything, even a barber shop in there. But um, they started selling long rifle soaps. And I was like, what a perfect opportunity. Now for the scent, they had all sorts of, uh, of soap fragrances there. They had Roanoke, um, they had a bunch of others. I went with the Bay Rum. It smells fantastic. It's just supposedly, according to this, just classic Bay Rum and lime. And I do pick up on that, but the lime is not a forward scent note. It's very much the Bay Rum with the complementing of the lime. So if you're not a big fan of citrus scents, it's not citrus blast in your face. It very much complements the Bay Rum, and I always felt that lime, lemon, um, citrus goes really well with Bay Rum. It's just a natural pairing. It works. But for the brush, I'm going to be using my Silver Tip Mohawk, and I love this thing. I picked this up from Etsy. You guys might know him. Um, he's also the owner of Razors Darwin. But he also sells a lot of vintage stuff on uh, his page, Osbro Conte. I believe that's how you do it. It's O-S-S-B-R-O-C-A-N-T-E. If you look him up on Etsy, and I'll try to include a link in the description box, he's always posting some really cool stuff that he comes across, oftentimes restored, especially on the brushes. And this is a great example of that. And I've always wanted a vintage Mohawk. And you guys know, if you've seen, I've shaved with this. This is not new. I've had this for a little bit. But it's one of my favorite Badger brushes. I'd say probably this one and my Buffalo Horn Silver Tip Badger from the Holy Black are my two favorite Badger brushes. So I'm going to be using this, pairing it with the brand new Timeless Shave Bowl. This thing's absolutely fantastic. I was fiddling around with it the other night. If you guys caught it on Instagram, I did a live and I experimented with a couple different soaps with this bowl and it worked out really well. I got some really good volume out of it, some really good density and some slickness there. Another new thing, I believe this is the 63C and this is from Parker. I love the guard bar on this. It looks fantastic, it feels fantastic. I'm real excited to use it today. I've heard this is a very comfortable open comb and the grip is very grippy. So this doesn't feel like it's gonna go anywhere out of my hands anytime soon. It's got some good weight to it. Um, from what I understand, it's chrome plated um, copper, I think, underneath, or chrome, chrome plated brass, maybe one of the two. And then you've got the zinc alloy head on the top. But Parker razors are typically made in India. Um, so something to consider if you're interested in Parker razors. I've been wanting to get a Parker razor for a while and was happy to find this at the Haberdashery as well because they also sell Parker products. So I love finding places locally that sell some really good, well-named, you know, well-to-do products. Parker's got a good rep. Uh, Long Rifle has got a really good rep. So I'm excited to use those today 
and I've paired this with a Permasharp blade. And I've heard this is just a very, very comfortable razor. And I've been wanting something in rose gold for a while. And so I decided to go and pick this up, see how it does. Because if you guys saw my live last night, I did shave with my dad's Mercur 34C. Um, and I used to really love that razor. Still do. Would highly recommend it to beginners by far. But I've since moved on. I, I like something that's a little bit more aggression. And even after shaving last night, you guys can hear it. Kind of sounds like sandpaper. I've got some growth here, and I've got some growth on my cheeks. So hopefully, this will mow that down. Geo Fat Boy, I was watching his video of it, and it looked like it did the trick for him. So, all right. So we are going to get started. I'm going to pre-soak my puck. That's typically what I do. I will say, I think it's cool that Long Rifle kind of stamps into their soaps. I like to see when artisans do that. I don't know why, it's just a personal preference thing. I always thought that was cool though. Just wet my brush. I had already pre-soaked it, so I just pretty much just washed it again and then rang it out real quick. I'm gonna load this up. And it smells fantastic. So with this Bay Rum, if you guys have followed me for a hot minute, then you know I'm a big fan of Bay Rum. And honestly, I used to feel like I would buy Bay Rum anything, but I haven't really run across a Bay Rum that's just blown me away, except for maybe um, Red Jack by Spiffo. Um, that one's really, really nice. But lately, I just haven't run across anything that's just been like, I have to buy it. But this one, if the scent really does how, it, how it's been smelling off the puck and how it smells right now, I think it'll be one that I'm going to be getting more of, especially since it's only 10 bucks. I know it's only three ounces worth of soap, but honestly, for some of us, we're just looking into that price point, and three ounces is going to last you plenty amount of time. So, and 10 bucks is not going to hurt anybody's bank. I just put a little bit of water in the timeless bowl, and we're going to get this lather built up. You can already see, just after a few seconds, no problem for this bowl. It's a great bowl to travel with. It's a really good, thick, high-grade polymer. So it's really nice, thick, feels like it's built like a tank. You can drop this from pretty much any height. You don't feel like it would take any damage at all. Add a little bit more water in there. The scent on this, though, is really fantastic. If you're a big fan of Bay Rums, I can tell you if it performs as well as it smells, you're gonna wanna pick this up. You can kind of hear that it's getting to the density that I like it to be. This is the soap that we have so far. Not 100% where I want it to be yet, but that's normal. I'm kind of picky a little bit, but it is really close. Just a little bit more water and it's gonna be right where I want it to be. But this timeless bowl, as cheap as it was on Amazon, blew me away. I absolutely love this thing, it's fantastic. I think this is pretty much going to be my go-to bowl from this point going forward. Of course, I think the only other bowl that I really, really, really like is my ceramic one by Thirsty Badger. He makes some really good shade bowls. Let's go ahead and run some water over this puck. And I'm going to use that as my pre-shave. Because typically, if you don't know, I typically use the soap um, and a pre-soak, I use that water as my pre-shave. Um, I do occasionally use things like the cube and the tube, my Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements, I really like that. Um, this for me is just kind of a natural pairing, it just makes sense. It's easy to do. Smells fantastic. As far as lathering pre-shaves go, it's probably not the best, but that's fine. I know a lot of really, really nice performing soaps that just don't have the, the performance with the pre-soaking you know, lather that you would come to expect from others, but I know some really good soaps that just don't have them. I'm gonna grab a towel real quick. Forgot to do that before coming over here and attaching myself to the mic. 
But we've got a good lather here. Let's get started and take off my glasses. Now, I've, I've really, you know, as time's gone on, I didn't really used to care for open comb razors. But they've really grown on me. And as my technique has improved over the years, and as my preference for blades has narrowed itself down, I've really gotten used to how to shave with some of these blades and the angles that I prefer on certain razors. And I've had really good results. The soap feels really nice. Smells fantastic. Some bay rums, you get a lot of spice and not much of anything else. This is a lot smoother, so I'd characterize this bay rum fragrance as citrusy with some spice, but it's very smooth, if that makes sense. The scent profile is smooth. It's not harsh. It's not boom in your face. It's strong. The scent fragrance is strong. It's definitely there. It's very masculine as all bay rums are, but it's very smooth and soft. I like it a lot. Like it a lot. Because even then, my face doesn't really react to things that much. But with some bay rums, whether or not it has clove or not, sometimes I still get a little bit of that bay rum burn. I think bay rum burns the thing. I just don't really care for it. Though there are a lot of fragrances that I like that I just won't use a lot because of that burn. Oh yeah. Feels more efficient than the 34C by far. And it's incredibly smooth. So I will say, on the long rifle, immediately what I'm noticing is once the lather's gone, I'm getting a little bit of bumping from the razor. So there's not a lot of residual slickness there. Which is fine. I mean, the soap's only 10 bucks. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, man. I got to make sure this isn't a fluke. Before I say anything, I'm going gonna... to shave my neck. It's got some good audio feedback. I really like the feedback I'm getting from the Razor. I will say the soap is making my face feel incredibly soft, but for the residual slickness, the residual slickness, there's almost none to speak of. Kind of feels like at this point, the only thing that's really lubricating my face is water though my face does feel incredibly smooth that's that's what's shocking me with this razor I've heard that it's just incredibly comfortable but sorry I bumped you guys So smooth. And because of how this blade sits on this razor head, I can I, I really can't feel the blade at all to speak of. It's working out really well though. Definitely taking down that stubble. Now, it's time to go against the grain. We're gonna see how that's gonna do.
I know a lot of guys in wet shaving that have stopped going against the grain just because they typically get the closeness that they like with the grain. Against the grain is not something that you have to do no matter what other wet shavers, forums, pages say. You don't need to do a against the grain pass if you choose not to. Nine times out of ten you'll get a completely serviceable shave, a DFS shave going with the grain. Because a lot of people, this is where you'll get irritation normally um, with certain razors if you go against the grain. Feels really good. I'm kind of curious to see how my Astra Superior Platinum blades would do in this. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna unscrew this. I'm gonna do one more pass against the grain using my Astra. I have one of my travel razors here. Because again, I'm not at home. I'm actually at my parents. So I'm going to throw in my Astra. Usually that's my preferred, but I've been trying to experiment with other razor blades. Kind of see how things work out. As I would recommend that everybody do that. It's just, you know, you keep trying things until you figure out what works best for you. And the Astras typically never let me down. They're absolutely fantastic. Super smooth, comfortable, efficient enough. They're not the sharpest blades out there, but then again, they don't have to be. They do not have to be. I hope you guys are having a good weekend, though. The start of the weekend. Or wait a minute. It's not the weekend. It's not Saturday yet. It's Friday. Man, I'm because I didn't work today, it's just kind of, it keeps throwing me off. Today is Friday, not Saturday, so scratch that. The Permasharp blades were comfortable, but these are even more comfortable. Oh, Astros, you never let me down. And when people tell you to map out your beard, I've never like formally mapped out my beard as far as the growth. I just understand, okay, this kind of grows a little bit sideways. I need to shave a little bit this way to get the most efficient cut or... But again, there is almost no residual slickness to speak of. So I can see if I get some irritation, it's going to be because I'm blade buffing a lot, even without any residual slickness, which I would never recommend to anybody to do. But Tim, why do you keep doing it? Because I'm a creature of habit, and I'm used to soaps that have really good residual. Like Vincent by Gentleman's Nod, great residual slickness. But truth be told, I would buy this soap just for the scent alone. Yeah. I'll probably end up buying the splash and maybe just use that in conjunction with some of my other soaps. I mean, my face is feeling good. But you can see that I'm having to follow up in certain places a few times just because, because there is no residual slickness. I'm, I'm worried about how I'm shaving, so I'm kind of trying to be a little bit more careful and cautious than I normally would be. But don't let that fool you. This razor is the smoothest open comb I've ever used, hands down. And with the Astros in there, it, it just sings. It does everything that you'd want it to do, be incredibly comfortable and be efficient.
I've, I've never found efficiency to be a problem with the Astros. They're not the most efficient things on the market. They're not a feather, but they're still great. And basically with efficiency, I mean, if you're not worried about doing multiple passes, I'm not. When I shave, I do part of what I do because of the experience, like bowl lathering. I mean, I take my time with my shave with the lather and everything as you can see so I don't mind doing multiple passes really efficiency efficiency all comes down to are you willing to do more passes or do you really want to bypass that process and get a really good shave faster that's where efficiency comes in and blades like feathers for instance are incredibly sharp um, they're also as far as the e blades pretty expensive but they'll typically take a milder razor, for instance, and make it a more efficient one because of the blades, the pairings. But I like Astra Superior Platinums. In my opinion, they just do everything so well. I'm glad I did buy the Permasharps though because the first experience that I had in certain razors, it'll perform even better. With my Mercure Future, that was the first time I'd ever really gotten a really good shave out of that razor. And it was because I used a Permasharp blade. So that's gonna be my go-to blade with the Mercure Future, love love that razor now it's fantastic it got me a super close shave but honestly this first go with the parker this is definitely going to be a regular in my rotation because it i mean my face is butter smooth butter smooth feels really good but unfortunately um i i really like this and i would say if you're someone that's on a budget or you know you really want to support what long rifles doing then i say by all means purchase the soap it's not going to hesitate it's not going to stop me from going on their etsy page and purchasing some of the aftershave because i love the scent of this bay rum it's one of my more it's it's probably one of my more favorite fragrances as far as bay rum is concerned and i've been a bit, pretty big bay rum fan for a while and i think this really hits the mark on the fragrance the scent is nice and strong i'm still smelling it after the shave but my face doesn't feel, other than being smooth, it doesn't feel slick. Sometimes you even get slickness even after you dry off and everything, and everything just feels really nice. This is a product that you would need to use an aftershave splash to pair it with because you're not really getting any post-shave truly to speak of. But that being said, I don't regret purchasing the long rifle. I've been meaning to try that for a while, and I'm glad I did. So let's see what we got in here. So for those of you that don't know, I have been trying out a bunch of different aftershaves from Phoenix Shaving, Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements, and I only have a few left that I've never tried. Um, let's see, what do we got in here that I haven't tried? I haven't tried Harvest Moon, the new Kapali that's going to be released soon if it hasn't been released already. We also have Coconut Bay Rum. We have Planet Nine, Boomtown Bay Rum. I'm thinking Boomtown Bay Rum or Coconut. Let's go Coconut. I see a lot of people posting about Coconut. I see a lot of people posting about Boomtown too. But my first Bay Rum experience was Sterling. And we, my girlfriend and I, Tiff, absolutely loved the Sterling Bay Rum. Love that stuff, love the fragrance. I would say I like the Long Rifle Bay Rum scent better. But then I moved over to PAA and the Atomic Age Bay Rum. Really like that too. Mm. Oh, God, that burns. Yeah, this is nice. There was one Pineapple Bay Rum. I tried Pineapple Bay Rum. And my big beef with the Pineapple Bay Rum is I didn't get enough pineapple. I got a lot more Bay Rum. Bay Rum Forward, but I didn't feel like I got any of the pineapple really. I mean, it was there, but it was faint. And if I'm getting pineapple Bay Rum, I want the pineapple to be boom, right there, and complemented by the spiciness of the Bay Rum. With the Coconut Bay Rum though, I am happy to report that the coconut is very present and it smells fantastic. I actually hate eating pineapple, but I love the scent of pineapple. And this smells absolutely fantastic. It smells great. I'm happy to report that is not the case with this one. The Pineapple Bay Rum, you know, maybe I got a bad batch, 
but on that one, the pineapple just wasn't enough there for me to go out on my way to get a pineapple bay rum. The coconut bay rum though, if you love coconut and you like bay rum, this is, this is the ticket right here. This smells absolutely fantastic. And this is gonna go, if you guys didn't know this already, I have a must buy pile and a pass pile. This is gonna go in the must buy pile. I really like this scent. Again, I like bay rums, sue me. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the shave. I'm just gonna go ahead, do a little bit of my magical editing, which is, means barely any on these kinds of videos, and then I'll get that posted. I'm also gonna be working on my podcast. I'm thinking about talking about synthetic menthol because it's my big passion project. That's the thing that I keep trying to advocate more artisans to do. The Holy Black, Stefan, those guys over there had really started pioneering that with the Tangerine Creeper. Well, well actually with the Lavender Creeper first and then Tangerine Creeper and so on and so forth. But we're seeing other artisans embrace the synthetic menthol, synthetic coolant. However you want to refer to it, it's the same thing. Um, absolutely fantastic. I think you guys are going to like that podcast. I'm going to describe some artisans that do synthetic menthols, and I'm going to talk about artisans that don't do synthetic menthols, and what the, really the difference is between the two, what you're going to feel, and what's the bang for your buck you're getting there. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for dropping in. I appreciate your love and support always. Just to showcase again what I utilized, I used the... Timeless Bowl, right here. Produced a nice, beautiful lather today. And the, I've really been very impressed with this bowl. For as cheap as it is, you can get it on Amazon. It's a no-brainer for me. If you like to bowl lather, you need to be getting one of these. Um, used my Mohawk Silver Tip. I used the Parker 63C, I believe, is what this one is. Really like this. This is gonna be in a regular in the rotations. And I'd actually probably have to say that's probably my favorite open comb right now. And I have a couple decent open combs, especially vintage open combs. My Gillette single ring is really nice, really nice too. Um, I used a Permasharp blade to begin with, and I finished that off with an Astra Superior Platinum just because I think it was a little bit smoother in this particular razor. Um, and I followed up finally with the Coconut Bay Rum, and that was pretty much it. I'll probably follow up with a little bit of Mysterium Serum. I usually do that with every shave and it doesn't mess with the fragrance at all, but it gives me that added post-shave feel that I love so much. But I tell you what, this Coconut Bay Rum and the, and the um, Long Rifle Shave Soap, really good pairing. The scents complement each other so well, that lime and, bay, and this unique bay, take on Bay Rum, plus this iconic Bay Rum, the Atomic Age Bay, uh, bay Rum DNA, combined with coconut, with the coconut very forward, really good complementers because coconut to me is a very characteristically smooth fragrance. It just smells smooth. Um, and that's what I would characterize the Long Rifle Bay Rum. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll talk to you later. Stay tuned for the podcast. And as always, hit like, subscribe. Thank you so much. Do, 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 down, do, be, do, down, down. Come, come, down, do, be, do, down.